All right, uh, in this part of the video tutorial for assignment two in CPI 111, we're going to create the required loading screen and the required in-game GUI, both parts of assignment two. Uh, let me show you an example of what this could look like. As you create it yourself, you may change around the style and the visual appearance. In fact, uh, for your own assignment, I strongly encourage you to modify things. So here's our opening screen, our loading screen. It's got the title and it's got some buttons. All of these um, assets are available on the course Blackboard site in the assignment two folder. You'll see a link to download all of the Dragon uh, assignment items. So you're welcome to use any of these items or to create your own if you wish. Uh, let me demonstrate quickly what will happen if you click on the help button then you get some information on how to play the game. If you click on scores you get the top 10 list of scores. Quit will take us out of the game and then start will start. So we'll come in, move my dragon out of the way. You can see inside the game we've got the number of babies that are saved. That's a requirement for the assignment. The health bar that goes down when you get hit by a demon and then your current score. So let me demonstrate quickly if I hit the uh, the demons, my score goes up. If I collect the babies, the number goes up. If I get hit by the demons, then the health bar starts to drop. And when I've saved 20 babies, then uh, the game will end and the top 10 score table will come up so I can enter my score in. So, let's get to it. I've got open here the uh, GameMaker file for the Dragon game, the one we've been working on in the last couple of uh, video tutorials, so I'm just going to continue on. First, let's go ahead and create the loading screen. As required by the assignment, you need to have a start button, quit, help, and high score buttons. In order to create those, you'll follow the exact same steps that you follow to create the other objects in the game. Namely, you'll start off by bringing in the sprites and then creating the objects attaching those sprites to them along with events and actions. So I'll start creating the sprites. I won't show them all in the tutorial because uh, you've done enough on your own, uh, but I'll put in the first one. So first I'm going to bring in the start button sprite. So I'll name it SPR underscore, underscore start. Click on the load sprite and then I'll go to wherever I've downloaded and extracted my dragon items uh, folder from the Blackboard site, and then I'll find all of the required objects there, or uh, assets there. Here's my start button image, so I say OK to that one, and click on OK. I'll create the rest of these, uh, and then come back once they're ready to go. We'll start creating some objects and the room for our opening loading screen. All right, so I've got all of the sprites brought in. In addition to the button sprites, I also brought in the title image. Um, before we begin to create our objects, I'm going to make the room into which our loading screen objects will be uh, placed. So coming up to the toolbar, as I always do, I'll click on the uh, Create a Room button. And I'll give it uh, a new name. Call this one Room Load. And I can have a caption for the room. This is what the player will see at the top of the screen. So I'll call this uh, Ryan's Cool Dragon Game. Call yours whatever you like. And uh, we want to bring in the same background for this loading screen that we use for the main uh, scene in the game, or if you wish, you can choose a different background image. Uh, just for keep things simple, I'm going to use the same image. So I go to my backgrounds tab, come down to about midway uh, on the left hand side window, click on that, and choose my back cave. So there I've got the same image. And then say OK. Now here's a really key thing that you're going to want to do. I just created that room, and in the list on the left-hand side, it's listed second 
after my room first, which is actually the main uh, game. In order for the loading screen to work correctly with our start button, the way we're going to create our start button, you should have uh, this room load listed first in the list of rooms. So I just simply drag it up so that it becomes the first item in this list. This is because what we're going to do with our start button object is we're going to attach a press event to that start button and then the action is going to say go to the next room. Well the next room is just whichever room is next in this list over on the left hand side. There are other ways to do this but for this assignment we'll go with the simplest which is to do that but again it will only work if the loader room is first on the list. So we've got our room now let's go ahead and create the objects for all of these buttons, starting with the start button. So let's create our start button first. OBJ underscore start, selecting the start sprite. I'm going to have a event added to it, and that event is going to be a mouse event, and choose left button. And then I have to figure out what it is I want to have happen when the player clicks the left button. What I want to have happen is for the game to start. And in this case, what that means in terms of the game starting is that we want to move to the next room. If you click on the main one tab in your object palette and then go down toward the bottom, you'll see the section called rooms. And the second button there is called next room. So just click and drag that over. You have an option then to choose a transition effect. This is some, something sort of nice to do. Either you'll just immediately switch into the main game or you can have some effect that will appear on the screen. Choose whatever you like or don't choose any if you don't like. I'm going to choose a fade out and in effect and say OK. Then uh, before I create the other objects, let me just show you quickly what this is going to look like. So I'm going to open up my room Expand it out so it's a little easier to see. And I'll take my, the only object I've created so far is the start button. So I'm going to place it down about here for now. Save this and I'll just show you what it's going to look like. We haven't added any of the other buttons that we're going to need and we don't have our title and so on, but you can still get a sense of uh, how we're going to move from the loading screen to the main. So here's our loading screen. There's my Brian's Cool Dragon Gang. Uh, title and if I click on the start button fades out fades in brings us out into the main game All right, let's uh, create our uh, quit button next So I come up and call it object quit Choose the quit sprite Add an event again. It's going to be a mouse event choosing the left button and then we need to uh, tell it what we want to have happen, which is going to be a, a, a uh, quit uh, event. I'm sorry, a quit action that goes with the left button click event to find the um, quit game action. Click on your main two tab on the right hand side. Come down to the game section and the second icon is the end game action and say OK. Now we need to create a help button so let's go ahead and do that. Call it object help. Select the help sprite. Add an event, another mouse event, left button then what we're going to do is uh, we, for our action, are going to use an action that's called Show Game Info. Under the Main 2 tab in the second section, you've got the Info section. The second icon is the Show Game Info action. What will be shown when this action is called is any information you've entered in over on the left-hand side under the game information item. 
So I'm going to go over there now and show you what this looks like. If I double click on the game information, I get this giant uh, notepad. What I want you to do for your assignment in this game information window is enter in the instructions for the player on how to play the game, uh, what the rules are for the game, what the goal is for the game, how they win, and so on. I'm not going to put anything in now. I'll just put in some fake text, uh, but when you do it, you should put in some concise and clear instructions letting the player know the concept of the game, what's the story of the game, uh, you can make one up, what the goals are and what the rules are. All right, next let's create a, um, let's create our high score object. So I choose uh, object again, obj underscore scores. Choose the score sprite. And yet again, add a left button event. And now we need to show the high score table. So I go over to the score tab and I select the show scores action and don't have to do anything with it. I can just say, okay and then say, okay, here. Now there's another object that we need for our loading screen, and that's an object for the title. We brought in the title as a sprite, but we now need to create the object for it, even though there isn't any code associated with it. In order to show it in our room, we still have to have it as an object. So obj underscore title, and choose our sprite title as the sprite for the object. All right, so now we've got all of our sprites created that we're gonna need for this loading screen. Now let's bring them into our room. And let's see. I've already got the start button in there. Now I'll add in my uh, title and I'll just sort of, it'll take a little messing around to get it to show up just where you want it to. It's a little far over to the left. Let's put it up about here. It's a little too far. That looks pretty good right there. I'll leave it right there. Then I'll put my uh, quit button in. Maybe I'll put it over here on the opposite end. I'll move it over one more right there. And I'll add in my help button. Maybe I'll put it about right here. And I'll put in my scores button about right here. So the placement of these isn't great yet. I would probably want to play around with it a little more, but it's close enough for now. You can work on it and place them uh, just the way you like. So let's save what we've got so far, test it to make sure all of the buttons that we've placed in there are working as they're supposed to. And assuming they're all working appropriately, we'll move on and start creating our in-game GUI. So let's click on help. It will show the text, the instructions for the game. Quit on, click on the scores, it brings up the top 10 scores. Quit will quit, I don't need to do that to show it. And then start will fade out and fade in and bring us out to the main game. So far so good. Let's uh, move on and create our in-game GUI.